What is going on guys? I'm back here today with another competitive discussion video. This time I'm going to be talking about the top five dark types in OU currently. I want to say thank you guys so much for the love I got on yesterday's video when I was talking about the top five fire types in OU. I really like doing these top five competitive geared videos just because currently, you know, it's going to be a while before we get a good solid viability rankings for all the Pokemon in OU. So I figured even though, you know, the metagame is really new, I can start making these top fives for each type. And then, you know, we'll be able to kind of have a consistent good tier list of, you know, what's the best, what's the worst, etc, etc. But let's get right into it. Today is going to be dark types, a bunch of these new mons are just crazy good and i'm actually excited to share this list because all five of the pokemon on this are new pokemon but let's get right into it first off we have none other than roaring moon that is right so roaring moon love this pokemon he made it to fifth on my list i got four potential sets for this guy let's just get right into it so i'm going to talk about the set that i like using the most first which is choice band uh, when Roaring Moon, people were first using this when the game had come out, everybody was thinking Dragon Dance is the best set. And I agree, Dragon Dance is very, very good. Uh, usually you're just going to see this, right? Dragon Dance, Terrastalize Flying, Roaring Moon takes really good advantage of Acrobatics. One of the few setup sweepers that can run plus attack nature over plus speed, which is really nice uh, because Roaring Moon is already fast as shit. And then the attack is also super sky high. Like this thing's uh, stats are really good. It's just it's Fizz Def that's bad. And I guess it's special attack is bad, but I mean, with attack like this, you're, are, you're always going to be physically oriented regardless. Either way, uh, Dragon Dance with Booster Energy is a solid set. The only issue I have with Dragon Dance is that you do have to use up your Terrastalize and become a flying type. It's not that big of a deal because again, Roaring Moon is ridiculously strong when it turns into a flying type. Like, the reason I like this Mon a lot as the flying type is because unaware Pokemon can't really muscle this thing's attacks that well because acrobatics is way too strong especially off flying plus as you guys know the booster energy boost does go through unaware which is a really really nice tech i basically have two sets here we got roost to attack or three attack personally i don't condone using roost three attack i seem to like uh i mean i seem to win way more with this just because having crunch means you don't have to terrestrialize if you don't have crunch then you don't even have a stab move until you terrestrialize, which I really don't like. I don't want to be forced into a position where I have to Terra or I'm fucked. It's nice to just have Crunch too. Also, if you have Acro and EQ, you can get walled by stuff like Corviknight. It's just, I don't know. I really like having a stable Crunch. Because sometimes I don't even want to set up my Roaring Moon. I just want to click Crunch. Maybe I need to kill the Golden Go in front of me. And I need to take advantage of his good speed stat. Other than that though, the set I really love is Choice Band. You guys have seen me spam this a lot recently uh, in my videos. I've been using it with Torkoal support. Let me go back and see. Yep, as you can see, Torkoal plus Roaring Moon, Choice Band, and then I believe one other team I was laddering with. Yep, Choice Band again. So I have actually featured, uh, I'm featuring both those sets. We got Roaring Moon here with Terra Steel type plus Iron Head. This is pretty nice to snipe fairy types, all that good stuff. Again, Roaring Moon is actually really, really nice uh, with Choice Band and Protosynthesis because Torkoal, I mean, Torkoal is now amazing, right? Uh, it was featured in the top five fire types video. Because its ability makes all the Protosynthesis mods go crazy. So Roaring Moon comes in, he effectively has plus one speed, thanks to the Sun Boost, and then he also has a Choice Band. So this thing comes in like it just got a Dragon Dance. It has U-Turn, which means you can, you know, play mind games with that. If you force your opponent out, you think they're going to go into, I don't know, Don Dozo or Corviknight or whatever physically defensive mod. You just U-Turn out, go into your, you know, other threat, and you're good to go. I really, really like running Choice Band. Uh, this thing's speed stat is just fantastic. The moves it has are good. Like, all these moves are pretty weak, right? Uh, like, this is 70 base power, 80, 80, 80. And then, even on this other version, the best move is Earthquake. But, I don't know, when I terrestrialize into a Dark type or whatever, or with this one, if you were to terrestrialize into a uh, Steel type, you'd just be hitting really, really hard. I'm telling you. Like, having the either the double Dark Stab or just having triple Stab coverage once you terrestrialize, it's hella nice with Roaring Moon. And I also just... I don't know. I feel like a lot of the times I don't even have to terrestrialize. I can just keep on clicking Crunch. I can keep on clicking Dragon Claw. People see Roaring Moon and they instantly think, oh shit, it's going to set up. Uh, whatever. I'm going to just do whatever. A lot of times I just leave this shit off versus Garchomp. I'm banded. I just kill that shit immediately with Dragon Claw. They don't even think they can, you know, they don't even think I can do anything. Um, a lot of the time I feel like Roaring Moon is able to put in work with Choice Band. I I would recommend that set over over Dragon Dance currently, but Dragon Dance is still very good. I mean, Hyper Offense is the main playstyle right now, so if you're going to run like a Glamora Spike Stack or what's the other guy, uh, Grim Snarl Screens, Dragon Dance will always be putting in work, but I do got to say, Choice Band, that's my favorite way to go with Roaring Moon, and that is the one that I would recommend the most. So that is who I have at number five. 
let me keep it pushing and talk about number four before i go any further though i do want to say guys give this bit a big like i'm trying to get 2k likes by tomorrow so definitely do give this a like appreciate y'all subscribe as well i'm gonna be having more content like that so let's keep it pushing next up number four we have king gambit so i have two sets for king gambit that's it first we have a defensive leftover set this takes advantage of king gambit's bulk i really do love this pokemon i kind of went back and forth when thinking about whether i would put this at fourth or i would put roaring moon but then i decided to go with king gambit so swords dance katao cleave iron head sucker punch it's pretty nice that king gambit got this move because a it doesn't miss which i mean i guess that's cool and b all dark types got uh screwed over right when they lost knockoff but at least this still has katao cleave which is pretty decent base power 85 so you know you can't really go wrong with that it definitely can hold its own still has access to iron head and its best move sucker punch king gambit's uh ability which we all know is absolutely super busted this thing gets a 1.1x multiplier to his attack stat for every teammate that has gone down so basically i have king gambit at fourth over roaring moon because it's just easier to play in my opinion and for that reason it's a little bit better king gambit is one of the few pokemon that rewards you for your own misplays right if you start losing pokemon on your own side you can always just justify it by saying whatever i was simply planning my king gambit sweep king gambit in my opinion is also probably the top three i don't know if i want to say it's the best user of terastalize but it's top three so many times you can be down in a game it's happened to me so many times uh and king gambit can come out turn into a fairy type or you can go flying type either way that basically covers the fighting weakness and that kind of thing i like flying type a lot because you cover the fighting weakness you cover the ground weakness and you can set up on great tusk really easily but if you save your terrestrialize for king gambit i have always found that this is the easiest shit ever to just terrestrialize and you can get up two swords dances with ease and it's just over for them remember this shit still has supreme overlord if three or four of the guys teammates went down you're so screwed if this thing terrestrialize into a fairy or flying type because it can totally put a wrench in your plans even if you know it's going to terrestrialize into either of those typings it's very hard to kill king gambit and that's why i actually have this spread as the first one i like a more defensive spread so this spread has 20 speed. I think some defensive shit hits 139 or 136. I, don't quote me. It might be like Blissey or something. Again, don't quote me. I don't completely remember what the speed hits. But for the most part, this is just a speed creep. A couple of bulkier Pokemon. The main focus of this set is that it has max HP and a shit ton of spadef. This was a little bit better in Flutter main metagame just because a lot of people were throwing out Moonblasts and that kind of thing. But I love this set, honestly. It's very good for switching into stuff like Scarf, Golden Go, uh, you know, repeated times during the game, of course if they don't focus blast but in general i have just got a lot of good utility out of this leftovers means this thing can stick forever and basically have uh pseudo recovery and with 56 attack evs and adamant it still hits pretty damn strong like this is still 352 attack like this is this is strong and again you have supreme overlord so i feel like you don't always have to go with max attack just because when you lose your teammates you're powering up this guy anyway so i really do like going with a more defensive set i've just found it's way easier to set up i have fairy on this one but again you can go with flying too leftovers but you can also go with like a dread plate or like lumberry or some shit like that but i think if you're going defensive just go with leftovers i like leftovers a lot on uh king gambit for this one reason because once you swords dance and the opponent's like ah shit i gotta switch around the sucker punch watch me epically stall them out yeah go ahead and switch eight times if i have leftovers i just got back eight rounds of leftovers now how the hell are you killing king gambit so that's why i like leftovers quite a bit um and i would definitely recommend this set but there is a second set i would like to show as well life orb this set is pretty strong too max attack max speed adamant this is better on just balls deep uh super offensive teams uh i actually kind of like this because sometimes you don't even have to really go for the terrestrialize with king gambit while with the defensive set you kind of want to make use of your terrestrialize more often than not this time i'm just really like just sending off attacks we got max attack on here life orb on here as well a lot of times i don't even feel like i swords dance i'm just going for sucker punches uh iron heads katao cleaves if two mons are down i already have like the 1.2x boost on top of that life orb this shit hits like an absolute tank like this is one of the best users of life orb in my opinion too uh because he's hard to oko right without a super effective move the only issue is it does die pretty quickly regardless i mean yeah it doesn't get one hit ko'd because this thing's defenses are amazing but when you have life orb you do give up king gambit's bulk and it's usually going to die to two hits like at the least so i do like defensive more that being said offensive definitely has its place in the meta and i'm gonna put king gambit at fourth for that reason i haven't tried other sets such as choice bandit or defensive or anything like that but i'm gonna be honest i don't really see any purpose in running anything besides swords dance 
plus Supreme Overlord. Even Defiant and Pressure, yes, those are good abilities, but when your other ability is Supreme Overlord, which again is one of the most insane abilities of all time, just go with Supreme Overlord. You're going to be wasting your time if you go with anything else. And Swords Dance, King Gambit, either of those, that's the way to do it. So with that, let's move on to the third guy. So the third guy, I had a little bit of trouble deciding between the third and the second guy. But ultimately, this is who I went with for number three, Ting Lu. Now, Ting Lu is someone that I have been using so much in the last three to four days. This Pokemon has proved itself to me as one of the absolute greatest defensive dark types of all time. I think that this thing is the greatest defensive dark type since uh tyranitar in ou for sure and we'll see as this metagame uh evolves if this is better than defensive tyranitar was so ting lu defensively this guy's stats are so disgusting 155 hp 125 defense 80 base spadef its ability vessel of ruin drops the opponent's specialist attack stat uh 25 percent which basically which basically beefs up this guy's spadef what like a third so basically his spadef is actually like 360 or 370 or some shit like that if you want to do the conversion basically this is the bulkiest shit ever like this is lugia like on steroids i love this mod because it has double hazards plus whirlwind i think in current meta this thing completely destroys most of the really annoying hyper offense teams ground types in general are really good right now because nobody runs ground resists right the majority of offense i see they can't really afford to run a ground resist uh like they run like a balloon golden go or they run like great tusk as they're like kind of ground resist otherwise you have to run corviknight as your uh flying type corviknight rotom wash that's like literally it currently in gen 9 if you want to have a ground immunity so it's just nice to be a ground type in general ting lu's attack is 110 so it's not weak either like these earthquakes hit pretty tough uh for me i like using this set the most with max defense and max spadef i just find it nice to have uh both of the defenses concentrated on and I think you should always have max spadef. Like, that's that's for damn sure. You always should have max spadef uh, EVs. You can have careful most of the time, I think. I just think it's better to capitalize on this guy's spadef because he's impossible to kill with a physical attack. Anyway, of course, it depends on teams. For this set, we have Earthquake, Whirlwind, Dual Hazards, just meant to be used on offense. You guys have seen me laddering with this team quite a bit, especially in the Valiant video. This set is max HP, max spadef. This guy just gets the job done, switches into Golden Go like it's nothing. You guys saw Make It Rain doing what? Like 28% from Scarf? That shit does nothing. Uh, Iron Valiant came in on me and went for a Terra... Yeah, it terrestrialized into a Pure Fairy, went for Specs Moonblast, and it did 70% to this. Like, do you understand how fucking bulky this is? Like, this guy's unkillable. So, I really do love this thing as a Stealth Rocker. Ruination is an awesome tech. I didn't come up with this. I got this from the creator of this team, Vert. Uh, but he showed me this and it had ruination and I thought that was really sick because it basically means this thing's not a sitting duck Like I love being able to hit Corviknight on the switch with the ruination and then stall out one of his roosts or whatever the case is In my lab earlier today when I was playing against the uh, Skeledurge I was also able to spam ruination against it keep taking 50% off of it And I stalled out all of its recovers that way which ended up helping me win the game towards the end as well So while I do love dual hazards on Ting Lu I do got to give a big shout out to Ruination because that just gets the do job done. And then Whirlwind is the move that you absolutely cannot lack. You need Whirlwind. Just being able to scare out hella bullshit that sets up is the way to go, right? You got a Roaring Moon that Dragon Dances in front of you, scare that shit out. You got Golden Go, scare that shit out. Like, it really doesn't matter. Like, you can really, you can get rid of everybody with Ting Lu. They got a Dragon Dance, uh, Dragonite, that shit's plus two, scare it out. It really doesn't matter. Ting Lu gets the job done. So we got a couple of sets here. For the most part, though, um... Stealth Rock, Spikes. This one has Body Press. This is a full Fizz Def set. I actually haven't tested this set, but my boy Storm Zone passed it to me. And I believe he got really high up on the ladder with this on one of his uh, balance teams. So I had to give it a shout out because, again, Ting Lu's defense is still fucking ridiculous. What is this? 513 HP, 383 defense. This is Hip this is Mega Hippowdon. This might even be Gigamax Hippowdon. Like, this is disgusting. So you can run Body Press as well. This shit definitely hits like a truck. Uh, Corviknight roosting on you probably takes more from Body Press than it would from Earthquake, honestly. But... Ting Lu, one of the greatest uh, hazard setters currently in the metagame, just gets the job done. If I had to recommend one specific set, I like the Ruination set the most. I just feel like it's not a sitting duck. And then probably Dual Hazard. Dual Hazard's like right below it. I just like Ruination because, again, I like having some offensive utility as well on my defensive guys so I don't get taken advantage of. And then I always am going to have Whirlwind because I don't want nothing setting up on me. That's why this set is cool, but it definitely depends on your team. I think Storm Zone on his team, he had like two unaware guys. So he wouldn't really be afraid of shit setting up on his Ting Lu. The majority of teams though, if you don't have like two unaware, 
I don't think you want stuff setting up on Ting Lu. So Whirlwind's going to be better. That being said, Ting Lu, my boy, he is at the third spot. Number two is someone that a lot of you will recognize. A lot of you will recognize, especially because I gave him a big shout out in yesterday's video. Chi Yu. Chi Yu. The boy is number two. So Chi Yu wise, we just got the same sets as I basically showed off yesterday. We got Scarf. We got Specs. And we got heavy duty boots. So this is basically the way you're going to see Chi Yu every single time. I kind of have these ordered in the way I consider them the best. Chi Yu with Scarf is a fantastic revenge killer in current meta. It's just very, very hard to beat, right? Like the meta is so offensively geared that a Pokemon that can get away with running a Scarf and just spamming its stab moves, that's a super blessing, right? I feel like Specs on Chi Yu is absolute overkill. You only need this if you're running a Sticky Webs team and you can afford to not run Scarf. Or if you want a one, uh, like just a one mon uh, solver to uh, stall. Because Specs Chi Yu, as I told you guys before, if you Terrastalize into a fire type with uh, Chi Yu and you have choice specs, Fire Blast will always 2 hit KO Blissey. And so then at that point, they're screwed, right? Because Dark Pulse 2 hit KOs uh, Don Dozo. Uh, the next best Spidef mon is what? Claude's Ire. Fire Blast blows that shit up too. Um, you don't even need a Fire Blast, uh, Claude's Ire. You can just flamethrower that. But Stall will never beat Chi Yu if it's Specs. That's 100% sure. Like, Stall will never beat this thing. In general, though, Scarf usually gets the job done better. I like Dark-type Terra uh, Terrastalize on Scarf just because it makes Dark Pulse easier to spam. Um, and i definitely be spamming Dark Pulse more into just, like, Garchomps and shit like that. Also, Dark Pulse flinches, right? You got to keep it real. Dark Pulse, how many times have you guys lost a 20% Chi Yu uh, flinch? Like, this shit always hacks its way through with Dark Pulse. That shit always happens to me. So I would always go Terrastalize Dark on Scarf just because it turns your Dark Pulse into super, super strong cracked hacks move it's just it's too powerful it's too powerful and that's my favorite way to go um but yeah i would always recommend choice above everything else not to say heavy duty boots is bad by any means heavy duty boots i have found the best use of this is the fact that it can switch into golden go and it's very hard to go for focus blast on the switch to a chi yu right because if it doesn't work out you could lose your golden go so a lot of the times people will not predict the chi yu to come in even if it's so obvious the chi yu will come in on you as a golden go you'll think oh well i have rocks up right so it's going to take 25 percent plus another 30 uh, percent for my make it rain so i don't even need to predict but then if chiyu does come in with boots then you're going to feel a lot shittier because it only took what 30 percent there was no rocks damage now chiyu is at 70 percent and you're in a way worse position because if you're running scarf golden go offense what exactly do you have on your team that's able to switch into chiyu so if you're running boots your best just running nasty plot three attack i was going through chiyu's move pool and i really don't see anything else worth using besides terra blast as the as like the fourth move like this guy really only gets his stabs just like my boy blacephalon back in gen 8 but i figured terra blast fighting is the best because you can actually hit roaring moon and you can hit opposing chiyu which can tank your hits so yeah i thought terra blast fighting was the best also if you run into tyranitar which i don't really be seeing but if you do see tyranitar then again yeah you can terra blast fight you also get rid of your fire weakness, so you could also probably fuck up Chi Yu and that kind of thing. In general, I think Terra Blast fight's the way to go if you're going to go with Nasty Plot. This set's definitely decent. And then another slash I wanted to say was over Flamethrower on Scarf or Specs, you can go with Lava Plume too. Lava Plume is nice. The uh, It's only 10 base power less than Flamethrower, but the 30% burn can oftentimes give a big difference. I didn't say that in my video yesterday, but someone in the comments did tell me to recommend that. And I thought about it, and I was like, you know what? Lava Plume is definitely good, and I used to run Specs Lava Plume on my Chi Yu. Uh, I go back between Lava Plume and Flamethrower, but yeah, you can't really uh, discount the 30% burn. That can flip the game in your favor and literally, like, a snap, right? So, Chi Yu, I really went back and forth between deciding if Chi Yu is number two or if Ting Lu is number two, but after thinking about it, I decided that Chi Yu is probably number two. It's just so easy to use. It goes on like any team, you can just throw it on. Because, like, you only need to use his stab moves. He's a good choice, Mon. Even with the Rock's weakness, dude just gets the job done. And the ability is busted, right? Dropping their Spadef. I love this guy. Chiyu. I hope you never get suspect tested. But I feel like at some point, at some point, it's going to be like, yo, Chiyu, why are you so strong? And the metagame is going to, the metagame is going to figure out something for it. Anyways, let's move on to number one. That's right. The big bad number one best pokemon dark type in the meta chien pao that's right some of you may have guessed that this was going to be number one i do like this pokemon quite a bit i have been using it a lot i don't know why the middle one is not showing up i guess he's he's afraid to show up but the the first and the third one showed up so so that's cool anyways i'm gonna show the set that i use the most um it is on the glamora iron valiant team i was showing earlier 
I do like using this Adamant Heavy Duty Boot Set, so you can really go between Jolly or Adamant. If you go Jolly, you hit 405 speed. If you hit Adamant, you hit 369. So there is definitely a few things that you miss out on, such as Roaring Moon. You also lose the ability to speed tie other Chien Pao. But personally, for me, I really do like the extra attack boost you get. Because this set is for attack, it doesn't have Swords Dance, you're not going to be boosting your attack anyways. I really do like terrestrializing into a Dark type often with this and just going for the Adamant Sucker Punches, the Adamant Crunches. I felt like this thing is able to fuck up, you know, Garganackle, uh, Dondozo, a lot of these defensive Pokemon that, you know, destroy physical attackers. If you terrestrialize Chiampao into a Dark type, I feel like he just crushes any defensive mon, especially if you, all you really need is Rocks Up. You don't even really need to Spike Up most of the time. I feel like Chiampao always body bags Dondozo in my experience because I just terrestrialize bro into a dark type. I start crunching. That shit's doing like 38, 39%. I have rocks up. Dondozo's oftentimes not boots. It's helmet. And if it is boots and it's not helmet, then great. I'm not taking recoil. So either way, I win is how I see it when I have an adamant Chiampao and I terrestrialize dark type and they have Dondozo or whatever the case. Chiampao is just really hard to switch into in general in this metagame. It really benefited from the bands too, such as Palafin, Iron Bundle. Iron Bundle gave this guy some competition because it was the faster Ice type, but now I think that this is very clearly one of the best Pokemon in the metagame. I would go as far as to say Chiampao is probably top 5 in the metagame right now. So we got three sets. My favorite, Icicle Crash, Sacred Sword, Crunch, Sucker Punch. Again, this is just a set that has done the most work for me. It's nice having Sacred Sword. I don't like wasting time Swords Dancing uh, with Chiampao most of the time. I just want to attack, attack, attack. His defenses are better uh, than I realized. 80 HP and 80 defense is super nice. You can... You can really live anything. Like, this thing lives plus one E-speed from Dragonite, even if Dragonite terrestrializes into a normal type, thus getting stabbed. Just to give you an idea of how bulky Chiampao is. In my vid earlier today, I went up against a DD Knight, and he burned my Chiampao. And even though he burned me, I was still able to 2-hit kill the D-Knight. He Dragon Danced, but his plus one EQ only did 75, because Chiampao is just bulky enough on the physical defense side to take a lot of these hits. So Chiampao, he puts in the work. Other than that, you can run Choice Band. I think Boots is better, though. I like switching up moves. I'm not going to discount Band, though. Choice Band, Terrastalize, Dark, Crunch. It's disgusting. I know that shit probably 2 kills everything. I know Corver Knight or whoever gets cooked. But I also don't like being locked into Crunch in a metagame where Great Tusk is on everybody's team. Not that, you know, people are going to be switching Great Tusk into Chiampao, but you never know. And in an offense versus offense meta, if you get one turn wrong, it can be enough to lose the game right there and then. Which is why I don't recommend Choice Band as much as I recommend Heavy Duty Boots. Or just going with Swords Dance uh, if you don't want to go with four attacks. So yeah, this is the way you can go with Swords Dance. Ice Spinner, Crunch, Sucker Punch. Ice, Ice Spinner is just like for consistency consistency sake. But I honestly like Ice Go Crash a lot on uh, four attack. I think the flinch is cool. Yes, it can miss. But I have always found that Ice Go Crash is one of the best moves to risk. 30% flinch at the trade-off of 90% accuracy is pretty damn good, right? It's not like Fire Blast or Hydro Pump. When you use those moves, the, the trade-off of missing is you don't get anything, right? Like, it's you're only using those moves because of the extra power they have. The thing is with Ice Crashes, Crashes, it's only 5 base power stronger, but that 30% flinch chance is oftentimes enough to win the game. 30% is extremely high odds, which is why I like running Ice Crash quite a bit on any Pokemon that gets it. Ice Spinner is a good, reliable move, but... You'll likely see me running Icicle Crash more often than not because, yes, it's hacks, but 30% is ridiculously high odds in Pokemon, right? So I would take the 10% chance to miss the attack at the odds of 30% flinch because a lot of times that can be a huge game changer. And so, yeah, you can run Scarf too, but I don't really like it. This thing has access to Ice Shard and Sucker Punch, so why run Scarf when it already has access to strong ass stab priority moves? Doesn't make sense to me. But I would recommend 4 attack the most adamant. That's the one I get the most mileage out of. And with that, that is my top 5 dark types. So, faster video than I had expected, but I really don't have much more to talk about. So, to go over it from the beginning, number 1, we have Chiampao. Number 2, we have Chi Yu. Number 3, we have Ting Lu. Number 4, King Gambit. And number 5, Roaring Moon. So, let me put, let me put them boys in order real quick. So we can see. Chi Yu right there. Oh boy, Ting Lu right there. The Gambit, and the Roaring Moon. And I think this list ultimately is pretty solid because when I look at it by, like, you know, how much support they need for a team, how much they do for their teammates, and, uh, you know, if they need to use their Terrastalize to be good, I would say that this is a pretty sound list from first to fifth. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know in the comments below if you agree, disagree, and whatnot. And definitely let me know in the comments below what you guys want to see 
with competitive discussion videos in the future from me. If you guys want to see more type videos, what types, you want to see team building videos, how to deal with specific styles, all those types of videos are stuff that I'm pretty interested in making. I feel like they're always pretty good to do in the early generation just because, again, metagame is hard, right? So it's good to just have those types of instructional videos. But let me know what you guys think. See you guys soon. Peace.